In the last class, we were looking at uh, how the tires behave in a, during longitudinal run, right? And of course, we started the lateral as well, but we will come to lateral in a minute or maybe after some time. We will look at the uh, longitudinal force development. through a very simple and very nice uh, model called the brush model. The brush model is, is very nicely explained uh, by Professor Pajeka in his uh, classic text, Tire and Vehicle Dynamics, which has gone, I, I think it is a third edition. It is a very nice book, uh, mathematically very rigorous. Uh, it would be very nice if you can have a look at uh, many of the mathematical models that are developed in this book on tyre mechanics, though we will not uh, be able to go into those models in this course. And we will be talking about very simple models because we have to move into uh, vehicle dynamics and discuss lot more things on vehicle dynamics. Uh, tire mechanics being extremely important, I am going slow and uh, we are looking at how actually the forces are developed and so on. There is a question just before the class whether we will have some mathematical model in this course. Yes, we are going to do a simple mathematical model, okay, which is going to be called or which is called as the brush model. And but there are very complex models that are available for uh, the force development in tires, but we will not, uh, we will, of course, we will talk about a very broad, uh, we will give, I will give you a very broad picture in the next class about what are all the tire models that are available for modeling the longitudinal as well as the lateral forces. But this model brings out the physics of uh, the tire behavior in the longitudinal direction. Okay. Uh, one of the things that we saw in the last class is that there is a pressure, I am just summarize, summarizing what we did. There is a contact pressure, there is a contact pressure under the uh, this tire uh, and there is a longitudinal force. In other words, contact pressure can be co converted into force and so on, but the total force F is it. So, there is a contact pressure and there is a longitudinal force due to which there is a shear. Okay. Now, we also saw the difference between braking and traction. So, we 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 said that there is a region, there is a region where the tire is going to stick to the ground and there is a region after which when the shear stresses exceed the, uh, the frictional um, uh, mu into um, Fz, uh, the normal force multiplied by mu or not pressure multiplied by mu, then we said that there would be a slip. In other words, if this were to be the contact patch, then there is a region where the tire is going to stick to the ground this is the region where it is going to stick to the ground and this is the region where it is going to slide. Okay. When I said slide, remember that these guys are going to just come in a bit okay, till again equilibrium is reached and so on. So, in other words, the maximum force that could be withstood is obviously in a simple model of uh, Coulomb's model is equal to mu into Fz. Right. What is our goal? Our goal is to find out how Fx is developed mathematically, express it and what is it related to? What is it related to? In passing, we define what is called as slip and we will see how the slip actually enters into the mathematical model and what is the relationship between Fx, the force developed versus the slip. This is the whole idea. 
So, how do we do this? Simple, by means of what is called as a brush model. These are the bristles, okay, which are sticking out, say, for example, from the carcass of the tire, okay, and they have a stiffness, let us say lateral stiffness, say lateral stiffness for, per unit length, which we would call as CPX, which is the lateral stiffness per mm or unit length. Okay. So, what we are going to do in this derivation is that I am going to find out what is the deformation. So, the first step is what is the deformation of this of this bristle or this you know, comb of a bristle which I would call as u. So, once I know what is the deformation, the next thing next thing I am going to do is to find out or multiply this okay, to find out the force. which is nothing but the C p x into u. The third thing I am going to do is to assume a pressure distribution because one is left hand side and the other is right hand side of the equation. So, I will assume a pressure distribution which in this case we are assuming it to be parabolic. Okay, assume a parabolic pressure distribution and call it as Qz. The next step, I am going to write down the equations, but I want to give you a broader picture. The next step is obviously, what is the next step? So, once I do it, I have the left hand side of the equation, what is this force? The longitudinal force and this is the right hand side of the equation, I can find out mu into Qz. Okay. I can find out the left hand side and the right hand side and then what do I do? I find out point at which the slip starts or sliding starts. I am careful to use the word slip because we are going to give a very specific meaning for slip. So, in other words, let us call that as excess okay. fine. Yes, this is a CPX, the longitudinal stiffness. A uh, good question. See, please understand that this bristles have two stiffnesses. Okay, stiffness is now you know what is stiffness. So the stiffness is here in this direct is in this direction. Okay, and stiffness can also be in in a direction which is perpendicular to the plane of the board. Right. So which you would call as the lateral stiffness. So which is CPY. Okay, so, C p y is the lateral stiffness. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, God, see longitudinal stiffness. Longitudinal stiffness, right. So, C p y is the lateral stiffness, I did not notice that, sorry. That is the lateral stiffness. Okay. Though usually it is assumed that C p x is equal to C p y, it is not so, there is a 50 percent difference between the two and so on, right. Good, I am sorry that uh, I hope it is ok. So, the point at which sliding starts, then as a last step what I am going to do is to find out the total force that is in the x direction, which is the sum of the forces that is generated in the sticking region plus the sliding region, sticking region plus F. Oh. 
So, F sticking plus F sliding, right. So, that is the total force. This is how our derivation is going to progress, clear. The derivation is, is going to be exactly the same when we look at the lateral forces. We will come to that. The same similar model is going to be used for lateral forces, but I am not going to derive this uh, in detail. People who are interested in this uh, derivation, which is going to be exactly the same, can refer to a book by Paseka. Uh, actually, he has derived the lateral force and said that it is similar in longitudinal force. I am going to do the other way about so that you will have both the derivations with you. I am going to derive the longitudinal force and then say the lateral force is going to be very similar. Of course, we will we will discuss the physics of that a bit later. Just before we proceed, a, a, a word of you know a comment that though we are discussing longitudinal and lateral separately, there are conditions under which you will have both lateral as well as longitudinal forces develop. So, in other words, when you are cornering and breaking, for example cornering and breaking, then there is a combined uh, lateral and the longitudinal deformations and hence there is a force which is both f x and f y. Okay. We will just, we will mention this uh, as we go along and uh, uh, again we will not be able to derive that completely, but at least we will just see this like this okay. um, and see what are the final equations right so with this with this background let's go ahead so it's always better that before we derive better that we write down what are the steps we are going to do then maths just follows the physics right okay now i'm going to make some assumptions because as i just told you this is a simple model so there are a number of assumptions which we are going to make to keep the maths within our bonds. Okay. Let us assume that okay, this is a, uh, the figure from uh, Paseka, we re redrawn it uh, in order to understand how the deformations uh, are going to take place. Let us assume that there is a point S, yes. this, this is a point which lies on the rolling this radius r okay which is such that it rolls on an imaginary circle without any slip on an imaginary ground like that okay so in free rolling yes uh, the velocity of yes in one direction this direction which is omega into re is equal to the v x. So, it does not slip point number 1. On the other hand, when there is braking or when there is acceleration, the velocity of s is different from v x, we saw that okay. and hence there will be a moment of v s or there will be a velocity of V s which we would call as V s x, we will see what this definition is in a minute okay. V s x okay. depending upon the braking or accelerating okay. it would be one direction or the other. Right. We will use the same thing like the V which is in this direction for the uh, tyre can be assumed to be V in the opposite direction for the road and that it is rotating okay, uh, at a stationary position. Let us assume that there lies a point, this, there, are, uh, there are slightly assumptions here because you may be confused as to about the r's, we are going to make some assumptions. We are going to make one of the assumptions we are going to make is that these radiuses are so large when compared to the lengths of these radius uh, or lengths of these bristles and so on that we are going to have we are going to write down this in terms of uh, you know radiuses which we have defined. In other words, 
we are going to make some assumptions on the radiuses to make again things simple. Let us say that S prime it is a physical point, it is a point in the tyre which moves with the same velocity as that of S, okay, which moves the same velocity as that of S. We assume that this bristles which are sticking out, okay, these bristles which are sticking out, though we have discrete bristles, actually you can assume that they are continuous, but then continuous bristles do not give that physics and so hence we can do that and later we will inter when we integrate it we will make it continuous. So, these bristles have a base, okay, two things, one which is sticking to the you can call as the tail which is sticking to the carcass and the other which is sticking to the ground, which is sticking to the ground, right. What is sticking to, so there is a difference between the two, what is sticking to the ground is going to move with the velocity of the ground and what is sticking to the base is going to move with the velocity of the tyre, the tangential velocity of the tyre. Since these two are going to be different in breaking and that is what we are going to see now, there is going to be a deformation of these bristles. That is what we said first that we are going to look at the deformation of the bristles. Right? So, the first thing first. So, let us look at what is V s x. So, V s x is as I told you is the difference between the velocity that is we will write that as V x okay, velocity of the ground minus omega into R e and that is where yes is sitting, which we can call as R. So, let us let us say V r say V r is equal to omega R e say so that V s x is V x minus V r. Right? Okay. Any questions? Yeah, slip, slip is a very technical quantity which we defined in the last class. We are going to define it again. Okay, English slip, English word slip means it's slipping, right? In tire mechanics, slip has a very specific definition. Okay, so though you can say that slip and slide are synonymous. Okay, so you can use the words interchangeably. In tire mechanics, slip is a definition. I am going to define that again in today's class, right. Sliding is the word which we use where when the force exceeds the mu into f slides moves, right. So, do not get confused between the two. I know this is a common confusion, okay. So, I am going to define slip now. Just wait for a minute, right. Now, the first thing is that I want to know how this tail has moved, okay. what is that it is moved. So, in order to do that, let me introduce a coordinate system with this as the base, uh, sorry this is 0, x is equal to 0, okay. positive in this direction. I know this is a very busy uh, picture, we will understand this picture slowly. So, that is a x is equal to 0 and that this is the positive x direction and that this contact look at that this contact patch is plus a and minus a. So, that is again a on either side of 0 this is plus a and minus a. Right? Okay. Now, the first thing is that since this these points here are moving all these points here are moving with S prime which is moving with the velocity of V r, V r, the motion, the motion of the base point, okay, uh, the base point, let us say to a point which is x from this point, so which is x from here. In other words, that the, uh, the base point travels a distance of a minus x okay, at a time which is equal to delta t. Okay, the base point is travelling with a velocity v r and hence 
the base point moves with the velocity sorry with the at the time m minus x into vr right at this time this is the base point moves this is say for example this has moved from here to here right at the same time the tip of that bristle or the head of that bristle okay that has moved that has moved a distance of at the same time the distance moved by the head is equal to v x into delta t right. So, at the same time the, the distance moved is v x into delta t right. So, you can say that the distance moved from here to here suppose I say that here to here this distance or let, let me put it like this okay this distance is v this is a minus x and this is the uh, this distance is equal to v x into delta t okay. So, because it is simple it is not even a figure is required that the base is moving with the velocity v r and hence that is the time that is required for it to move and the uh, head okay, is moving with the velocity v x and so the distance mode is equal to v x into delta t right. Any questions? Simple. So, what is the deformation? The deformation is the of this bristle one at one hand it is moved this and the other hand that is the distance. So, the deformation is nothing but the difference between the two okay, so that you can write down the deformation u to be v r minus v x into delta t. It is the same as s, s prime's velocity same and v s x. Okay. So, yes, the question may be is it r e, is it sitting at r e, how it is that, yeah. So, that is why I said initially that we are going to make some assumptions. We are going to say that r is so large that there is a small difference, okay, it does not matter, and that is how we are defining it. Right. Substituting uh, the expressions. So, I can write that to be v s x, what is v s x is nothing but v x v r uh, minus v x or v x minus v r because it is going to be you know the just the difference. So, let me define that as v x minus v r or sorry this can be v x minus v r. So, that that is the deformation that is actually the deformation that is equal to v s x into delta t and delta t is a minus x divided by v r so into a minus x. Okay. Since we are considering breaking I have to be careful correctly we will write. So, v s x into v r the a minus x right. Since the deformation is in the my, my coordinate system is positive along this direction the deformation actually is in the negative direction. So, I have to write the deformation to be minus okay. I am going to define two slip quantities okay. One of the slip quantities called theoretical slip sigma term given by Paseka that it is a theoretical slip okay is defined as this difference v s x by v r. Okay. So, that u can be written as u can be written as minus a minus x into sigma x. Right. We also define a quantity called practical slip kappa which is used by the industry 
Okay, usually people in the tire industry talk about kappa, which is the what we would call as the practical slip, is given by minus Vsx divided by Vx. Okay, this also will put minus so that we are okay. We use the same quantity, there are plus, minuses, there are so many definitions, I will stick to that definition. So that u can now be written as, okay, sorry, I will remove that, I will put a minus there, okay, can be written as, in terms of kappa as well, okay, you can find out the relationship between sigma and kappa from this and can be written as a minus x kappa into 1 plus kappa. Okay. So, the first step is over. So, we have found out the deformation. Okay. I, I hope my signs are correct because one other thing is that I am deriving, breaking. If there is any sign difference, I would. Hopefully, it is correct and I am going to, I will correct it later. Right. My next step is of course, finding out the force, we will come to that in a minute. My next step is to assume a distribution for the normal forces. I said that we will assume a parabolic distribution, okay. So that Qz, very common distribution that is assumed, okay, all through is equal to, so what it should be in terms of total Fz and in terms of A. So, we will write that as 3 Fz by 4A into 1 minus what should be the quantity there? It should be, you can take a guess, <coughs> x by A whole squared. Okay? So, that when it is x is equal to a or minus a, the term in the bracket goes to 0 and so q is it goes to 0, okay. So, it is maximum when x is equal to 0. Right? Okay. So, let me now get to q x. So, this, these two are fine, okay. Qx is quite simple. So, what is the way we write it? So, so, Qx is what? I know the deformation multiplied by the stiffness Cpx okay, into A minus x into sigma x or kappa by kappa plus 1, 1 plus kappa. So, the point which I was trying to say is that this is what we define a slip. That is why you have to be careful when you use the word slip in time mechanics, right? Okay. That is fine. So, the next step for us is to find out when does the slip happen? Is it slip? When does the sliding happen? Right? Okay. When does the sliding happen? When does the sliding happen? What do you think? Yes. So, mu n. Now, q z I know, q x per unit length. So, q z. So, it should be equal to q x should be when it is less than q mu q z, there would not be any slip, sli sliding, sorry, sliding and exceeds it will be there. So, I will write that condition. Is equal to mu into q z okay. 
clear? Let us define a quantity called theta just to make things easier for us to write. Let me define a quantity called theta, theta x because you can define similar one for This is the th this one that is the assumption I make as to how contact pressure is distributed right. So that you know the contact pressure is like this why basically because when I integrate this this expression I should get f z integrate it from minus a to plus a I would get I have to get the back this this expression. Clear? So, that is the expression. Let us define theta x to be 2 by 3, let me just write that carefully 2 by 3 C p x a squared mu into f z. Okay. Let me simplify this expression now. Let me simplify this expression. Can you do that? Let us simplify this expression. Write a minus a squared minus a x squared into a plus x into a minus x. Substitute for theta and get me a value of uh, the relationship between theta and sigma x. So, the first thing let me uh, I mean nothing great let us say that x is the point at which point at which sliding takes place. x is the point at which sliding takes place right. Let me also call this as 2a lambda following Pacheca it is a fraction of 2a, it is a fraction of 2a, 2a is the total length of the contact patch, okay, 2a lambda is what we saw as excess. Okay. Now, let us take this expression and write down this expression, substitute for theta and write down what is excess. So, it just do that and it is very simple 3 by 4 mu f z divided by C p x a squared into that is the a squared into a plus x s by a. Right? What I did was just a, this is a plus s into a, a, a plus x into a minus x. Okay. My goal is to find out when total slip takes place. When is the total slip takes place? Lambda is equal to 1. Okay, that makes my job easy. Right? Okay. Let me remove this. Now, substitute for uh, x s to be 2 a lambda okay, and that is the, uh, the point at which this lambda I mean point from the from, from the uh, if this is the contact patch. Okay. That is what we called as 2 a delta. So, that lambda is equal to 1 is equal to 2 a. 
but in terms of our x note this carefully there is a difference right. So, that because we are looking at x from that point from this center right we are looking at x from this center this is at x is equal to 0. So, in other words this point is x is equal to plus a and that point is x is equal to minus a right. So, let us substitute that in this expression x is okay is a minus a minus 2 a lambda that is what is x in other words that is x that is a minus 2 a lambda right and hence I would write sigma x to be 1 by 2 theta x into a plus a minus 2 a lambda divided by a which I am going to simplify. I am not going to do every simplification you can do that and that is why I am writing it. And hence lambda the point at which it starts is minus theta x sigma x. So, lambda is equal to right ok. I said that lambda is equal to 1 where the complete you know the sliding takes place 2 a that is this is the completely the sliding. So, you can write that so theta x to be plus or minus depending upon So, let us now find out the force f x. Let us now find out the force f x. As I told you before, the force f x is the force developed in the sticking region plus the force developed in the sliding region. So, I can write down x s from our my previous expressions whatever I have done to be very simple you can you can see that f z omega r e divided by v s x into c p x. very simple whatever I have done just substitute that. So, f x can be written as a to a minus 2 a lambda sorry lambda is equal not 1 0 I think you guys said not <laughs> ok. A lambda should be equal to 0 for this that is that is why you get this ok. Be awake right lambda is equal to 0 is where complete sliding takes place not here lambda is equal to 1 right. So, that is why you get theta x sigma x equal to 1 no good that is the point complete sliding, sliding just moves like that right. What is that I did? Simple C p x sigma 
a minus x c d x c divided plus this one and x s I have got from this expressions that is all right. Integrate this and I am giving you a final expression okay. I am not going to do the integration it is not a very difficult integration. So you would notice that this is the this is the expression. Right? You would notice that I can draw f x now in terms of sigma. So now if I now plot f x versus sigma, my graph would look something like this. This is the sigma versus f x. For very small slip sigma you can assume it to be equal to kappa the first term gets into picture. Okay. So, you can one of the quantities of interest to us you will see that later is always the slope here which can be approximated okay, by if you look at kappa it is approximated to be 2 p 2 c p to a square and what is this quantity that is the maximum force and the maximum force would always you need not even look at any of these things maximum force would always be equal to mu into f z. So, this would be mu into f z. Okay. So, essentially this is a brush model okay, where we found out the deformations, we found out where the sliding takes place, the place where the sliding happens and we just found out the force due to just deformation and due to sliding and then we wrote down a complete final expression period. Okay. Look at that I um, this is slightly different from what is given uh, in Paseka as an expression, but I, I think this is this is correct have a look at it. Okay. Now, practically this may not be a straight line okay. and that is because we have assumed mu to be a constant, but there is going to be heating and there is going to be dynamic friction and so on and usually the mu here as a constant may not be valid and you would have a drop here. We would talk about that again in the next class. But before that, let us now look at the lateral deformations. Any questions here? Uh, when we integrated QZ and QX, uh, that is possible when there is no slip rate. Right? The slip condition at which the slip happens, that is what we said, the condition under which the slip happens is equal to, this is, this is a condition where both of them are happening, is equal to the QX. Okay per unit length force developed per unit length is equal to mu into q z. This multiplied by dx that in the q z is what I had written down there. Okay. So, that is per unit length. So, mu into q z is equal to the q x develop when both of them are the same then that would be slip. Okay. So, this may happen say for example, at this point. Right? If it is completely sticking this is how it would happen, it would look like when for example here is where that excess where sliding is going to happen okay then this guy would actually start slipping sliding rather he is going to slide so this is how it's going to slide clear Q Z is like the 
QZ is a normal. See, what I am using is nothing but mu into F or normal force, very well known, is equal to that is all I am using. Only thing is, I am using it for unit length, right. So, whenever this is actually an inequality, this is not an equality, this is an inequality, right. So, whenever F is greater, it won't slide, that is all. Whenever it is equal, uh, it will slide. The same for both sticking and sliding right? No, sticking is a portion which is before. When it reaches, what we said is when it reaches mu in multiplied by this quantity uh, QZ, when it is equal to QX, it slides. That is the point by which we found out lambda or XS. Clear? So, they are when they are equal, so in other words, if this is going to be the contact patch, okay, sorry about my diagram, then we said that this is where it is sticking and this is what we defined as 2A lambda or this is what we defined as Xs, okay, which is equal to A minus 2A lambda, sorry. I should not say x s, it is 2 a lambda and that if this is the x uh, is equal to 0 and then this distance is what is called as the x s, which is okay, clear. So, we equated it to find out that point at which sliding takes place. So, at these points we assumed that the force is given by mu q z per unit length d x multiplied force okay, per an infinitesimal length d x, then we integrated it throughout. Actually, it is x into integral x s minus a, which is right. I, strictly speaking, I should write it like this. X s to minus a. Right. Any questions? Clear? Okay. Now, let us look at quickly a lateral force development. I think we have to get back to this figure again in the next class. Let us do that in the next class. Apuru has drawn it so beautifully, I feel bad that I have to rub this and we will do that in the next class. <laughs>